Hello there, this is David from David Books and Comics, and today I'm going to show from the pages of Secret Origins number 11, 1986, The Secret Origin of the Golden Age Hawkman. And this is a story that was written by Roy Thomas, who was a... Um, great fan of the Golden Age Hawkman and the Silver Age Hawkman from um, Brave and the Bold number 34 back in 1959. Anyway, um, this story was adapted primarily from the story that appeared in Flash Comics number one that I showed in the previous episode from January 1940 as written by Gardner Fox and Dennis Neville. So the story was lovingly recreated by Roy Thomas, like I said, one of the great fans of the Hawkman. The artist is Luke Mac McDonnell, Tony DeZuniga, and Mary DeZuniga, inking the artist is Tony DeZuniga and Mary DeZuniga's letterer, Carl Gafford, colorist, and... Robert Greenberger is the coordinating editor. Hyksos, usually rendered in English as the Shepherd Kings, is the name given to by the Greek historian Manetho to Asiatic invaders who in the 17th century BC conquered Egypt and founded the 15th dynasty. The word Hyksos is probably from the Egyptian word Hegekase, meaning ruler of a foreign land, and doubtless referred to only to the actual kings of that people. Their chief deity was the Asiac, Asiatic storm god Setek, a variant of the Egyptian god Set. He was worshipped at the Hyksos capital of Everus in the eastern delta, from which, through their vassals, such as the Nubians, they ruled much over much, if not all, of Upper and Lower Egypt. Because they left no monuments, little is actually known for certain about Hyksos, though they are said to have brought the horse and chariot to Egypt. Hyksos rule finally collapsed circa 1567 BC when the native Egyptian rulers of Thebes expelled them and founded the 18th dynasty. Hmm. Very interesting. But unfortunately, it doesn't tell me why the hell I've been having vivid dreams about the Hyksos every night for the past month. For the answer to that, I have to lean on my friendly corner psychiatrist. A waste of perfectly good anti-gravity metal, I know, just using it to reach books on the top shelf of my library. But I'm not ready to give its secret to our fledgling defense effort just yet. After all, the whole idea for it came to me in another dream the other night. And I'm still not sure I could readily duplicate. Bring company. Better get this belt of my ninth medal off before I make a sudden move and make a three-point landing on the ceiling. Yes, I'm Carter Hall. Then this is for you, Mac. All the way from Egypt, no less. Egypt, huh? Curiouser and curiouser. Huh? Never mind. Literary reference. Maybe not so curious from my old college mentor, Professor James Rock. Sure, he's on a dig in Egypt right now. Probably wanted to ship 
me something for my collection before the Nazis start stirring up trouble west of Suez. Now we'll see what we shall An ancient crystal knife, your basic sacrificial model, apparently, except that it's transparent and glowing. Why did it seem so familiar when I laid eyes on it? And the glow, is that what's making me dizzy? Or did I just party a little too much last night? Better sit down, try to compose myself. But I feel so sleepy. Am I going to dream? Again, Kolar. Hit him again. Crack. Park. Enough, Kolar. Perhaps our beloved Prince Khufu has finally decided to tell me what I want to know, eh? N never. You far born devil. Never blown the prince? I suspect you have no conception of precisely what that term truly means. Cut him down, Kolar. Fool, you go free if you simply tell me the route to be taken by your people's rebel army. I do so want to prepare a warm welcome for them when they arrive here from Thebes. You think I'd betray them to a foreign dog like you? Stranger things have happened, good Khufu. But failing that, perhaps you could tell me where the Princess Shira hides from this priest of Anubis. Again, I say it. Never. Walk. Guards. Guard, if he escapes, our cause is lost. Then I pray that Isis and Osiris put wings on my back, that I may fly from this evil place. But I will return and kill you, false priest, and when I do, your death shall not be pleasant. Faster, faster. Shira, thanks be to Horus, you are yet safe. I have hidden here, as you told me, that Hathset's minions might not find me. Then we must flee back to Thebes. No, I feel it in my soul. We are doomed to die at that evil one's hands. But if I must die, it shall be with your name on my lips. I shall always love you, Khufu, through all eternity. Don't speak of death, my princess. Your heart will never know the pain of Hathset's dagger. That decision is in the lap of Isis. Yet somehow I know that even if this blade were to pierce both our hearts, we would love each other still in death. And one day we would live again, love again. Shira, what's this blackness in the midst of day? It is thus the dark god Setek strikes. Yes, Setek, for it truly is he whom has set serves, not good Anubis. Look, has set soldiers, they followed me. And fool that I am, I led them straight to you. But men at least are not magic. Men I can fight. And fight I shall in the shadow of the hawk god Horus, while breath remains within my body. Ark. Khufu, no, oh please, do not kill him. We shall not, princess. That pleasure is reserved for Hathset alone. 
Welcome back to Abydos, my friends. You, Prince Khufu, would have stopped me from becoming master of the world. But now, only you and I could ever ho have hoped to wield such power, had said. For I know the old secrets as well as you. Perhaps better, blonde prince. That is why you must perish. First you, then the lovely Shearer from the root for reasons you cannot begin to fathom. No, not Shearer. Spear her, spare her, and perhaps... It is far too late for bargains, Khufu. Too late for anything save death. I, I die, but I shall live again, and as shall you. And then it is I who shall be the victor. Do you hear me? Hath set. It is I. Ha! My God. I must have fallen asleep. Been dreaming. Must have been getting this crystal dagger in the mail that set me off. Back in your box you go, so you don't get another crack at me. And me... I could use a nice long walk. Me as a blonde Egyptian? That's what I get for mixing brandy and vodka. Maybe I should give up playing armchair archaeologist and just shovel even larger donations to the real McCoy. Of course, with everybody betting Hitler will attack the Allies come spring, I doubt England and France have their minds on digs in the Near East. Maybe I should get up an expedition myself, like I'm always threatening to. It... Ah! Huh? People screaming, pouring out of the subway entrance in that smoke. The rails, they're burning. Help, somebody, help. The trains are on fire. Run for your life. What the hell are you talking about? None of it makes any sense. Get out of our way. We've got to get out of here. Nearly to the bottom now. If I can just get past... Oof. Please, you got to let me... Look, young lady, you're going to tell me what's... Shira... Yeah, yes, I'm sure. Now will you get out of my way? Not so fast. You're going back down there with me. No, please, it's horrible. My God, those people dead, just charred corpses, and the rails being flooded with some kind of ultra-high voltage. We'd get, her ba get back topside. Officer, any idea what happened down there? None, Mac. But if I was you, I'd get my girlfriend out of here. Anywhere. 88 Rimbo Road, driver, and step on it. I'm taking you to my place, Shira. I've got a story to... No use. She's too terrified to listen just now. Or to protest. And you say you've had dreams almost identical, identical to mine, Miss Sanders. Yes, only I thought they were just nightmares. No, please, I'm so tired. You can rest here as long as you like. I'm going out for a little while. At last, it's all fitting together. The bizarre pieces of some macabre puzzle. My sudden desire recently to purchase apparatus to trace the source of electromagnetic waves. That crude hawk mask I felt compelled to make after I saw it in a dream. These artificial wings I laced with the same ninth metal as this belt made of still no inkling why I named the stuff ninth metal. In fact, did I really invent it the other week? as I've assumed, or did I merely rediscover it? In my dream tonight, 
or Prince Khufu, anyway, spoke of old secrets he knew. Could Ninth Metal have been one of them? Well, I won't get the answer standing around in this Halloween gear. If I'm really going out looking for the man who caused tonight's catastrophe, I'd better go prepared, right? Got plenty of weapons in the house, even if they're all at least as old as this quarterstaff. I've floated a few times before, but this is going to be different. Here's where I find out if I'm heir to Daedalus, who mastered flight in old Greek legends, or to Icarus, who flew too high and wound up breaking his neck. What's wrong? What's gone wrong? I'm falling. But no matter what, my belt should be slowing my fall. Think, Carter, think. Yes, that's it. Got to concentrate on flying. That's what I've always done when I wore the belt. And my wings. Got to use my wings. Amazing. The slightest motion of my shoulders and I stopped dead. I heard Khufu's voice whispering to me before telling me that ninth metal is closely tuned to a man's mind. It was my, yeah, it was my voice too, because I'm Khufu, reincarnated somehow, and I'm someone else too, one who wears the aspect of Khufu's patron deity, Horus. Look, it's some kind of gigantic hawk, but it has limbs like a man. Well, the main thing is that this little gadget, I'll soon find the source of that deadly voltage. There it is. The estate of Dr. Anton Haster, known to be one of the world's greatest experts on electricity. But even if my interest instruments haven't led me here, I'd have known where to come. It's as if I can feel that within those walls waits hath set, or maybe I should say his modern reincarnation. Mm. My lightings have swept clean the subways of the city, causing death, carnage, horror. Soon I shall make my demands and rule as I was born to do. Rule as I did as hath set, ancient priest of the death god. Then, what's that? You always talk to yourself like that, friend. Khufu. I said we'd meet again, hath set. And now, at last, we have. No, keep back. But what have I to fear from the spawn of one my ancient self killed. If you live again, you'll die again. Now. Your electrical arc won't hurt me, madman. Both my quarterstaff and my ninth metal are non-conductors. And the staff has a few other uses to boot. In monuments you have destroyed the work of months, years. You'll pay for this, Khufu. Pay and pay and pay. Damn. While I was getting my jollies thrashing Hastor's lab, he must have ducked into a secret passage. Sure, I'm new to at this, but that's no excuse, not after I saw all the men and women he roasted in that subway. I find him, so help me God. So I should have realized from the start he's not Khufu or Horus. He is the reincarnation of Khufu. A phenomenon whose imminent coming I foretold, I myself had foretold, then forgot in my panic. Well, great Anubis, God of the dead, and secret servant of dark Setek. 
I will strike at this Khufu through his Shira, for such there must be. I shall call unto her ancient blood for praying before your holy altar. Your altar of myrrh. Lord, what's that smell? It's so sweet, so sickly sweet. No chance of finding the hidden room in that pile of rock. I'll come back and raise the place if I have to, to stop the killing. Soon as I check and make sure Shira Sanders is all right. Go on. Back to her own bed or no. That lingering scent in the air, stirring memories within me, visions. A crossbow and another cloak of ninth metal. Let this be the weapons which I lay, the modern hat set low, as he laid low my spiritual ancestor more than 3,500 years ago. This must be the place, lady. Spooky as hell, if you ask me. Hey, you forgot to pay. Leave now. Ha, huh. who's that? Keep your money, sister. I'm going back to Hell's Kitchen, where it's nice and safe. Creak. Come in, my princess. Welcome to the house of Dr. Haster. Welcome to the temple of Hathset. Come, my dear. The altar of Anubis stands ready. And you delivered yourself. And you yourself have delivered into my hands the sacrificial dagger which had been lost for many lifetimes. After untold ages, my revenge, Hathset's revenge, will at last be completed. And beyond your powers of comprehension, a chain of being sliced at its weakest link. When you die, a death from which there can be no more rebirths. Stop. Khufu, you're too late. I don't think so. Even if the girl doesn't die by the crystal dagger, my flesh-searing dynamo will deny her to you. Not when this mantle of ninth metal covers her, it won't. Not to settle with you, Haster. Stay back. You wouldn't shoot me down in cold blood. He's right. Damn him. Khufu would. And Haster deserve it. But the part of me that's Carter Hall. Whoever you are, we can work together. The power we can command. Forget it. I'm turning you over to the police. And the charge will be murder. Yes. All right. I'll come along quietly. Why, you filthy... Ah, blame. I should have figured you to have a pistol stashed. Great. He fell against the dynamo, causing it to run wild, setting the stones themselves afire. You're through, Haster. And you won't even have pirate victory. Since now the subway deaths will be thought just a, a freak accident. You win for now, Hawk Man. But perhaps I shall not die. Who, who knows? I do. His heart stopped beating. He's dead, all right. And Shira, I will be just as dead if we don't get out of here. Oh, Shira, thank God you're all right. All right, why shouldn't I? Huh? Carter Hall, is that you behind that fright mask, isn't it? That is you. I remember lying down on your couch after that. My God, we're up in the air. What's going on? Nothing, Miss Sanders. Nothing at all. 
Just go back to sleep and maybe by morning I'll have figured out how to explain those bad dreams you've been having. And then again, maybe I won't. Two years later, Carl Carter Hall learned that Dr. Haster had miraculously survived when he and his flying eye returned to plague the wartime all-star squadron. Yet even the Golden Age Hawkman and Hawkgirl never learned the full secret behind Haster's mad plan, which is only now being unveiled to their son in our deluxe title, Infinity Incorporated. And so the story continues. And that ends the retelling of the origin of Hawkman by two of DC's finest uh, creators, Roy Thomas and Luke McDonnell, inking by Tony DeZuniga. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, story, this story from Secret Origins of Hawkman. And Power Girl is also in there from uh, Secret Origins number 11, published way back in 1986. And remember to give me that like. Thanks, everyone, for your subscriptions. And as always... Don't hesitate to make any comments or just give me that thumbs up for the like. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Two fine writer artists uh, did the creation of the story. And I hope you enjoyed the pictures. Okay, thanks. Bye.